Okay, so here we are. We're going to begin at our uh, portal, which is at bankofapis.com. So this is your one-stop shop for everything to do with our hackathons and with the Blue Bank API. Now, if you're watching this, then it's probably because you're a developer and you want to know about the developer bits. And so the first thing to do from bankofapis.com is to click on devs at the top of the screen. And that takes you through to our API documentation. So you can see here um, at the top of the screen, it says uh, sign in. And that's where you want to go and click to get signed up in the first place. So to sign up, click on sign up now and fill out this form. I'm not going to do that because I'm already signed up, so I'm going to click on sign in and sign in as myself. So now that I'm signed in, I can go and look at APIs. I'm going to click here on APIs. It shows me a list of all of the APIs that we have uh, published in the past. The most recent one down here at the bottom is uh, version 0.6. So if I click on that, then it will take me through to the online documentation for the API. So this shows us everything that is in the API. So it shows all of the different calls for accessing the resources that we expose just to get us started. Let's have a look at a simple one. So I'm going to go to get ATMs. So we have a list of ATMs that RBS has. And here we can see um, a bunch of documentation showing how to call the API and a nice big try it button. If I go to the try it button, then I'm actually on a page now where I could send a request and get back a response. You can see here all of the APIs I've just asked for all of them, so it, it gives me all of them. So there's some pretty good documentation in here, and there's the, the try it features, which are great for the unauthenticated calls. Um, but really, uh, once you want to get into more complex scenarios, it's best to consider this uh, just documentation and to use a tool that's more suitable for the purpose. Uh, for example, Postman. So, I'm just flipping over here into my uh, Ubuntu desktop and I've got Postman running. So I'm going to show you um, how to get going with the API. So the first thing um, that, we, that we need to do is we need to know um, a couple of bits of information that have to be attached to the API calls. The first one is your uh, subscription key and the second one is your bearer key. So the subscription key identifies you as a developer and this particular application. The bearer key identifies the customer uh, that is running the application. And that is in, in real life set as um, the result of an OAuth 2 um, authentication. In the sandbox, we've got a stand-in um, authentication process that I'm going to run you through. But the first thing you need to know is your subscription key. And so I'm just going to show you where you find that out. If we go back to the portal, go into profile, then we can see here a list of all the subscriptions that I have access to. And if I go click on the show button, then we can see here my primary subscriber key. So that's the first key that I need. So we need to take a copy of that. And in Postman, we need to add that in as a header, as we've got here, which is OCP-APIM-Subscription-Key. So that's set up. And that's us ready to now do the authentication call to get back our bearer key. So we do that call against this endpoint here. So HTTPS colon slash slash cloud level dot io slash token. So if I call that, then we pretty much straight away get back a response and that response contains the bearer. So what I need to do is take a copy now of my bearer token. 
and I need to add a new header that's called bearer and I need to paste that value in. And once I've done that, I'm able to actually begin to make calls against the API. Okay, so the, the starting point for any API call is uh, to get the customer's object. So provided that we've got our subscription key and our bearer headers configured, we can do a get request against the API at customer's endpoint. So the starting point for calling the API successfully is to make a call against the customer's object, which is at the top level of the API. The URL's on your screen right now. And to make sure that you pass the subscriber key and the bearer headers. And if you do that and send that GET request, then as you can see, you get back a customer object which shows that this is, in fact, my account. Now, the most important thing here is that we have an ID field as part of the object that comes back. So that is the unique ID for this particular customer. So if I grab that ID and just add that to the end of that request and send it, nothing exciting happens. I just get back the same object, but uh, what I can start doing now is start looking at the other uh, sub-resources underneath that object. There's only one, and it's called slash accounts. So if I make a call to get customers slash ID slash accounts, then that shows me that this customer has two bank accounts. It shows me what they're called, it shows me their balance, and most importantly, again, each one of these has an ID. So I'm going to grab the ID of the second one, which is labelled as a current account. And I want to go and look up information about that current account. So I need to go to a new top level object. So I'm going to go into accounts slash, and I'm going to paste that ID in. And now I end up with, uh, well, it's not very exciting again. I just see the same object back. But once again, there are new sub-resources of that object that I can access. So for example, if I say transactions, then I see a list of transactions. Now, these aren't in any particular order. Um, but there are some query options that we can append to our request to start doing interesting things with this data. So, for example, um, if I want to sort these, I can say query sort order equals, and I can give the name of a field, for example, transaction date time. And now if you look at the dates, you can see that these dates are back in uh, April and May of last year. So it's showing us in oldest first. If I want to invert that, I can put a minus sign in front of the field name. And if I do that, now we're seeing them in newest first order. I can add additional field, uh, additional query string options by um, using the ampersand character and adding new queries. So for example, if I want to limit which fields come back, then I can say fields equals, and I'll say transaction date time, comma, transaction amount, comma, transaction description. If I send that, then we see what we would expect. So that covers the basics of interacting with the API. I think if you've used a REST API before, then it should be fairly familiar to you. So um, hopefully that gets you going, and uh, we're really looking forward to seeing what you come up with. Thanks.